Seekers, I'm Nick. After we did the Seagate Fire Cuda 520 video, we got lots of questions as to why we didn't test the Sabrent rocket, even though I answered that in the video. The answer is pretty simple though, we didn't have one. Well, that is until now. Sabrent saw that video, they hit us up, and they sent us through the PCIe 4.0 version of the rocket 1TB. So, I decided that I would make a video that you guys actually requested and put them head to head to settle this once and for all. Which drive is faster? Let's find out. out of the way first. To get the most out of these PCIe Gen 4 drives, you're going to need a PCIe Gen 4 compatible motherboard and CPU combo. So you're looking at either like a Ryzen 3000 CPU, a third gen Threadripper, along with an X570 board or a TRX40 board. There's no exceptions to that at all. Now the Rocket is Sabrent's flagship M.2 SSD and is designed for high speed applications like video editing and content creation. You guys know this spiel. You know, you know what these drives are for. It features a PCIe Gen 4x4 interface that offers sustained peak read and write speeds of 5 gigabytes per second by 4.4 gigabytes per second. And if this sounds the same as the Seagate Fire Cuda 520, it's because it is. And just like the Fire Cuda 520, basically all the other PCIe Gen 4 drives do this as well. They all use that Fizen E16 controller to get their business done. As I was filming the B-roll for these drives, <laughs> and I'm just going to cut into the video just anywhere randomly just to explain this, I noticed something that I wasn't really expecting. Now I took the sticker off the back of the Seagate drive, which is this drive here, and this is the Sabrent drive, and you'll probably start to notice this already. Both of the PCBs for both of the drives are absolutely identical. Like they even have the same revision numbers on the PCBs as well. Obviously they have like a batch number of when they were actually printed, but the revisions of the boards are literally identical. Every surface mount is exactly the same. Uh, the Seagate has a couple extra surface mounts, but the Sabrent drive has provisions for them. And it's just um, something I wasn't really expecting given that these are uh, two drives from different manufacturers. However, maybe that's only telling half of the story. Maybe the PCB specification is actually something that is controlled by Fizen themselves. So they're basically like, hey, you have to use this PCB for these drives. And there's probably people who've talked about this already and people who have noticed this, but I just wanted to address it because I don't really look into what other people are doing because it doesn't really interest me. But if there's something that I personally observe, then I'm going to share that with you. Now, if I pull this off, I've already pulled this off already. I already uh, voided the warranty, but I did this in the name of science. Actually looking at the memory themselves, I suspect the Seagate drive has better memory than the Sabrent drive. Uh, they do have different actual physical memory chips on them, but the PCB is exactly the same. Yeah, I just thought that was a bit interesting. Obviously, this is just something off the cuff that I noticed, and I just wanted to say something about it just in case other people already knew about this. The drive is also fully PCIe Gen 3 compatible in case your board doesn't have PCIe Gen 4. And the version that Sabrent sent us was the version without the heatsink. However, we did all of the testing using a heatsink, except for the testing that we didn't use a heatsink, which you're going to see a little bit later. And we've been building up our storage database in our spare time. And if we don't have a result for a certain drive, uh, I don't have one. And that's the only reason why you're not seeing it. So please don't ask why we didn't test a certain drive. Okay, are you guys ready for all the benchmarks? There's a lot, so let's do it.
From all that testing, it's pretty clear that both the fire CUDA and the rocket are within a margin of error indifference, but in cases with higher Q depths and larger sample sizes, the fire CUDA is overall a faster drive. But again, it's such a small margin that it's almost, it's almost nothing. But it's also interesting to me because all of these Gen 4 drives all use that same Fizen E16 controller. And the next thing I was curious about was if the rocket with thermal throttle, considering unlike the Fire Cuda, it comes in two versions, one with a heatsink and one without a heatsink. So I decided to sacrifice my own drive in the name of science. And I'm just gonna give you the short answer really quickly. Unlike the Fire Cuda, which doesn't throttle without a heatsink, the rocket thermal throttles quite a bit. It's between 15 to 40% depending on the workload. And I would highly recommend using a heatsink on it and I decided basically not to show you all the data because we'd be here all day and you've already seen like 400 graphs as it is. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you some thermal data and with a high workload and show you that the rocket runs significantly hotter than the Fire Cuda 520 and that it does throttle. So let's take a look at all that data. I find this super interesting considering how physically similar both of these drives are. And like I said, when we did the Fire Cuda video, PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives are expensive, but they're, they're really fast. And, and that's basically the bottom line. But the debate is always, do you actually need these speeds? And do you want to pay for these speeds? It's always going to be up to you. And I'm not going to debate this because again, I'm gonna leave all of this up to you. Now, these drives are actually getting cheaper as well because I, when I went to research and add some extra data for this video, I noticed that the original Fire Cuda video, the price was like 430 Australian dollars. It's actually dropped to like 379 Australian dollars, which is only $15 more than the Rocket One Terabyte. And in the US, the Rocket One Terabyte and the Fire Cuda 520 are about the same price. The question is then, which one should you buy? Uh, I reckon just buy the one that fits your budget. But both the Rocket and the Fire Cuda have a similar warranty, they have a similar price and similar performance. At the end of the day, it might just come down to brand loyalty. So yeah, that's, that's the bottom line on both. So just decide whichever one you like better. And if you're interested in grabbing the Sabrent Rocket Gen 4 one terabyte, they're going for around 230 US dollars, around 365 Australian dollars at the time of filming. And the Fire Cuda 520 has dropped in price. It's 230 US dollars or around 379 Australian dollars at the time of filming. So yeah. Let me know if you guys use any Gen 4 drives in the comments. I'm still keen to hear, to know what you guys are using. I, I wanna know. I, I'm trying to get my hands on more drives so we can add more of that to the testing. So then we can really just build this massive database so one day we can do like 50 drives in one go to make everyone happy. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button or joining us on Floatplane. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And the reason why I'm so awake today, guys, is because it's like nine o'clock in the morning. I just had my first coffee and I was like, let's get this video done first thing in the morning. Cause yeah, I, I found these results pretty interesting. I stayed up quite late last night, putting all the data together and yeah. Ah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video, which will be sometime later. Bye.